live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering NAB 2017, brought to you by HGST. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with Lisa Martin. We are wrapping up three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage here at NAB 2017, the Cube's first trip to, uh, to NAB. What a great couple, three days it's been. Lisa, really enjoyed working with you over the last couple days, and what a show. Oh, what a show. Frick and Martin together again. <laughs> it's been, this is the biggest show I've ever been to and seen and experienced, and the, the breadth of solutions here for just the, I don't want to say amateur, maybe photographer, filmmaker, to the six major film studios. That is so shocking to actually see all of it in person. It's a little overwhelming. I took, I took a little walk around at lunchtime and, and out in between the convention center, they got the satellite trucks and the, the satellite dishes and steady cams and drones flying around. Yes. There's a crazy drone on the back of a jet ski. Really a bunch of exciting stuff, 360 cameras all over, virtual reality cameras all over. It, it, it's, it's overwhelming. The, the creative tools that can be put in most people's hands today are virtually unlimited. Um, but it just makes me wonder, is it, you know, is it too much? I guess it's always great to have more tools to work with from a, from a creative point of view to just have alternate ways to you know, kind of realize your vision and bring your vision to, to, uh, to, to life. Yeah, I would agree on the, the comment of overwhelming. Um, there's so much to see and do here. I, when I walked out to lunch, I felt like I was in a, on a treadmill that wasn't going anywhere. I'm like, <laughs> where, where's the exit? But you know, the, the whole theme of the event, the Met effect, um, I think this, being here, sort of, you're, you're feeling the convergence of media, entertainment, technology. You know, one of the great quotes that I read before we came here from Shira Lazar, who's the official Met evangelist here, is if content is king, then technology is queen. And I think we really saw that underscored in all of the different guests that we had on the program the last couple of right. days, from security experts to those that are um, enabling large-scale rendering in the cloud for big movies like Deadpool to talking to Adobe who's enabling you know, the next aspiring YouTube star to be able to have access to what they need to do to, to be creative and really let their creativity flow. Right, and then the comfort zone is we see the same things that we see all the time. We see democratization of data, uh, access to the data. We see more data-based decision making, especially what I found really interesting in the conversation around audience um, development and audience knowledge and you know, the, 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 the great advantage that Netflix had over the original cinemas or HBO is they actually knew who was watching. They had profiles out. How long did they watch? When did they change channels? What were their similar likes? Um, so this, it's all the same things. The, the amazing amount of power that can be delivered via cloud to any individual or small company to really uh, be a game changer in terms of capabilities where before they would have to make these tremendous investments. Same things we hear over and over and over at all the other events that we do. Exactly, I would say I would agree with you on that. There was a lot of transcendence, that the things that we saw here, obviously at a media and entertainment show, but things that are very applicable in retail, in sports and sporting events, um, from the filmmaker, studio down to the individual guy or gal, really to, even to healthcare, you know, you talk about, we talk about um, this massive volume of data today, incredible opportunity or historic event really that happened with NASA from the International Space right. Station, the first ever live 4K stream conversation from 250 miles above the Earth down to, uh, to Las Vegas of all places, where that wasn't possible too long ago. And you think of how massive data sets are, not just in video, but also music production. Um, we even look at things that are transcendent to healthcare, but it might not be videos, but it might be the massive file sizes for all the imaging. So there's so many things that I think there's a lot of cross-pollination with a lot of the other shows that we go to. Um, I agree with you on the audience front, you know, being a cord cutter, we're all cord cutters these days, right? Um, something that was interesting to me was, you know, you kind of think, well, like you said, the streaming providers know so much about their audience, and you think, well, traditional film, they don't know as much, it's been more qualitative. And actually, when we had um, Joan Rabbits on from HGST, she was actually saying, there's benefits on both sides, that the right, streaming right. providers actually can't change content, 
whereas the filmmakers can. So there's really a lot of um, collaboration and learning that both can do from each other, even though they are obviously competing for Mindshare. But Lisa, you're trying to be way too professional. Let's just call a spade <laughs> a spade. You got a ball with the astronaut. I mean, I we've did. had, she said there's only 40 astronauts left in the US space program. You're right. We've had two of them on theCUBE, both women in the last six months. That's right, that was, I can't even say it was a dream come true because it's never something I dreamt was even possible, but having started my professional career at, with NASA Ames in, in the Bay Area, um, I recognize Tracy Caldwell Dyson from her photo I saw many years ago, and, and what a great ambassador for, and, and very inspiring. She was talking about what inspired her to want to be an astronaut back when she was 14, the Challenger uh, accident, which had a teacher. And we were asking her, you know, with, with real-time video capabilities, what is that what does that mean for NASA? And she was saying, think of the next generation of astronauts and the next generation that will be going to Mars, how much more inspired they're going to be because with this technology that they, that they even shared today, it makes space exploration so much more tangible because now there's these, these incredible videos and images that can be transmitted down to Earth in real time. So that was um, probably the highlight of one of the highlights of my life, I would say. So thank you for handing over the keys for that well, it's one. Just, it's just great. I mean, when, when they arrived on the set after the broadcast from space, I mean, the whole area lit up. I mean, they're such, as you say, ambassadors. Astronauts yeah. as ambassadors. They're super smart. They're super friendly. Uh, they totally have their, their stuff together. And you know, to get an opportunity to have to have her on was was really cool. I mean, that was a really uh, great moment and, 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 and so fun that you had the background to appreciate it even oh. more than most of us do. So yeah. that, you know, that was a kick. And it, it just goes to show, it is really about the future. Uh, there is a very bright future um, ahead. We're going to keep covering it. We'll still keep going out to these events and uh, hopefully be back at NAB next year. I hope so. <laughs> All right. So with Lisa Martin, I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. Thanks for watching us from NAB 2017. Keep an eye out, the busy season is just getting started here in May. We're going to be all over the airwaves for all over the rest of the summer, so keep an eye on siliconangle.tv, youtube.com slash siliconangle, and siliconangle.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>